Welcome to the lab. This is the, called our Centennial Research Facility. Uh, this was built in 2010, the anniversary of our first century of service to the public. Where you are right now within that facility is in our large structural mechanical property testing facility. It's the largest of its kind in the world. Uh, we can test uh, members up to 75, 80 foot long in here. We can also test buildings that are multi-story. Uh, in addition to that, we can test little sticks of wood. A lot of the things we do are still hypoth hypothetical or theoretical. In order to actually verify that what we come up with in our offices and in our laboratories and in our theoretical investigations, to translate that, we actually have to conduct tests of full-size, real pieces of material. I think one of the th real exciting things that's going on right now is the work here in the lab in the nano crystal, uh, nanocellulose area, where we're actually talking about breaking the wood down to the nanoparticles and then reconstituting it back up to make everything from uh, structural materials to uh, bulletproof glass. It's, it's an amazing material. We're now at the uh, new pilot plant for making cellulose nanomaterials. We start with wood pulp, so we're starting with a relatively pure grade of cellulose to begin with. And because they're nano, that means that their dimensions have to be under one nanometer. Uh, cellulose nanocrystals are about five to six nanometers in diameter and about 150 nanometers long. The smallest thing we can see with an optical, teles or optical microscope is about uh, 500 nanometers. So a cellulose nanocrystal, we cannot observe it with an optical microscope. We would need to be looking at it with an electron microscope. They are so small that they do not reflect or refract light. Uh, so you can get uh, colorless and clear uh, materials from them. They're very high strength. Uh, they're regarded to have the strength anomaly of steel or Kevlar. Uh, and they're low density, about a sixth of the density of steel. So there's the potential to make uh, very high strength composite materials with these things and also to have clear materials. So. Uh, in addition to uh, the typical things you would be making uh, fiber reinforced composites of, which would be you know, airplane bodies or uh, uh, the blades in uh, uh, windmills, you could be thinking of ballistic materials like uh, armor or ballistic glass. You could also be looking at uh, car bodies and some of the high performance applications, potentially even some of the sporting uh, goods that are made at this point with carbon fiber. All right. So the pilot plant is built on three levels. Uh, these first two reactors are 100 gallons each. We are using one primarily to make cellulose nanocrystals. So to do this, we take a, a shredded pulp and load the vessel up with shredded pulp and then we pump 64% uh, sulfuric acid uh, through some spray nozzles as the agitator's turning this bundle of pulp. Reaction's over in about two hours. We open up a valve at the bottom and the slurry then drops from this deck down 10 feet to a larger reactor that's just below us. That reactor is 1,500 gallons. It's full of uh, water and uh, the dilution takes place there, then we go and neutralize uh, in that reactor, and then we just walk away for about two days and let the solid material settle out of the bottom. Decant the solution off the top, dilute down and repeat that process, let it settle, decant again, and then we're ready to go to a filtration system for the final purification of the uh, nanocrystals. We have looked at uh, both hardwoods and softwoods, and we've looked at uh, many different types of uh, species, pulp from different species, and the crystals we get are very, very similar. And the nanocrystal level, the trees pretty much give us the same type of crystals, and we get pretty much the same outcome. We don't have much, see much difference from one fiber to another. Our issue is it has to be a wood pulp. Uh, but surplus wood and waste wood can go into wood pulping applications designed to 
use what the uh, solid lumber industry, the dimension lumber industry, didn't need. So they used the tops that uh, were left because they were too small to cut two by fours out of. They would use the slabs off of the sides of the tree that you couldn't cut into dimension lumber. And they would use the trees that were too crooked or were decayed in the middle. The wood fiber is uh, diluted down to about 1% fiber and 99% water. And it's squirted out of what's called a head box, which is this device right here. And it comes out onto what is referred to the wire, which is like a mosquito screen, only with a much, much smaller hole size. So these are the press rolls that uh, press the uh, sheet up to uh, uh, about 45% solid content. And these are some of the dryer rolls that are steam heated to dry the sheet. These, then, are our cellulose nanomaterials. So this is uh, cellulose nanocrystals. They're 5% by weight in here. Mm -hmm. And you should notice that it's fairly viscous. The water's moving relatively slowly. Mm -hmm. After this, the water is all uh, tightly associated with the cellulose crystals. Mm -hmm. So this could form the basis for an invisible car? Yes. Yes. So if you start with a clear resin, cellulose nanocrystals like this, mm -hmm. you could make a car that would be, the entire car would be clear. It would, the entire car would look like a window. Probably not be invisible yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of pedestrian accidents. <laughs>